So during this time, uh, ministry uh, really didn't stop. It didn't stop at all. What happened was ministry changed. The way we did ministry changed. If you ask any of the guys, uh, for us, uh, we got busier in church. We got busier doing the things that God has called us to do uh, because we were so concerned that, that we wanted to make sure that the church of God, the church of Rochester, that our people would have the spiritual food necessary to continue to grow as a believer. So we were very concerned that people uh, would receive the Word of God, they would be fed regularly. And so we also thought how we could minister to our people, but yet it was such a, a hard time to do it. And, and what ended up happening was we kind of met one-on-one. -on -one. Someone in, in need would come and we would, we would talk at my house or if we would go, I would go to somebody else's house. And uh, one, one time that I was with a couple and this couple uh, had, was going through a struggle. Uh, a young lady was uh, expecting uh, pretty soon a baby and this baby was going to be born prematurely and the doctors pretty much told this young lady that to, to be prepared that this is going to happen. But what was really awesome is the Lord stepped in and, and we had a, a great time of prayer. Uh, we had a great time of prayer over this young lady and it was awesome where the Lord stepped in, really did a miracle. Uh, she was 26 weeks pregnant and was going to be giving birth to this uh, baby. But the Lord stopped all of that. The baby, uh, after that prayer meeting, uh, it was growing better. Uh, there was no need for any uh, a surgery, extra surgeries on top of what they already had. And so this family experienced God reaching in and doing something awesome, doing a miracle in the midst of a pandemic. And so your ministry uh, never ever stopped during this time. What really, uh, ministry just changed for us. So. When we came together and all of this happened really overnight and we had to start live streaming, what well, we did on our very first Sunday and our setup was pretty simple with our live uh, stream before. It was one camera in the balcony, the audio quality was okay, but we really wanted to make sure we stepped it up so people weren't distracted when they were uh, receiving a message or a sermon or basically having church online. And so I remember the very first Sunday we had a service, we did a live, and I had a, I had a 40 minute message prepared and I preached that message in 20 minutes because I was, I was nervous, I didn't, didn't know what camera to look into and, and it was just a weird setup, especially the live was so daunting as, as John said before, we had, it was as if you had to be perfect in the camera. And so I remember uh, the, the next couple of weeks, what we did is we actually transitioned from doing live to actually pre-recording our sermons the day before. So uh, for our Sunday sermon, we would meet together on Saturday with the elders and pastors. We would pray for the church, for the needs of the church, and then we would go uh, and we would preach a message. While in the background, while we met as elders and pastors, the sound team and the auto team and the video team, they would be in the back and they would be preparing for this. And so it was, it was, a, it was a, an extra setup day, and then on Sunday we would have that uh, church online uh, for that sermon. And not only that, before that it was even aired, we had another person, Vadim, he would actually edit the videos and he would actually post all these videos. So there was a lot of work behind the scenes. And then for a Thursday like interview or a Bible study, we met on a Wednesday, once again, meeting to pray for the needs of the church. And then also we would do that interview or do that sermon. And on top of that, we, we thought that it was necessary for our church because uh, some people understand Ukrainian Russian better than English. We added additional service on Tuesday so that our church could be spiritually fed. And we all through all this wanted to, as a, as a team, wanted to glorify God and everything we did. But with the technology that was coming, it was Greece Assembly, thank, thankfully, they let us uh, use their technology and they really updated the technology from cameras to sound, sound boards to all these different things. And so what actually made us as a team, we had to adapt to this. And so uh, Brother Andrew and David, they had to adapt to uh, using these things and using these cameras and, and trying to put a, a light behind the speaker so that there was no shadow. And so we had to learn on the dime. And so there was a lot of different things. So there was a lot that had to take place. For, for us to have church successfully online. And then uh, Brother Vadim, I remember when he had to edit, after he edited, he has to upload it. And sometimes there was issues uploading because it wouldn't, uh, the technology sometimes wouldn't cooperate. So there's a lot of different things that had to come together really for, uh, for anyone to watch. There's the service that we had online on their phone or, or, or on TV. And so, but we're thankful to God that we had this ability that the Greece Assembly updated their cameras and we had amazing quality really 
uh, for a church our size, and we're thankful for the Lord uh, that we were able to do that. With the COVID-19 pandemic happening, it was extremely unexpected, and I would say one thing that was even more unexpected was that churches were prohibited to gather. I would never imagine that churches wouldn't be gathering. I would think that the only reason why we wouldn't gather on a Sunday would be because of the rapture. However, that was not the case, and we were uh, we had to cancel our regular gatherings and do everything online. And another thing that I really was impressed with, and I just saw how the Lord blessed us and gave us wisdom, was that we didn't skip a beat. We just uh, had to transition. Everybody was doing what they had to do. We continued preaching. We continued teaching. And it was just uh, a seamless transition. There was a lot of things that were behind the scenes, but I was really impressed how the Lord just blessed us, gave us wisdom. We were composed as a team and continued ministering uh, in the way that we could only minister through online and reaching out to people over the phone. So I was just very impressed by that and it was good to see how we were able to adapt to COVID-19 in this pandemic and still continue to minister. Something positive that I think that we could take from this time of quarantine and the time where we were, weren't able to gather was that we could really assess and evaluate how we truly feel and how strong our desire is to gather. Uh, maybe we weren't with such a zeal and passion coming to church maybe this time of quarantine kind of put things into perspective kind of showed us how important it is to gather how important it is to fellowship so i think one positive and maybe this might even be the biggest positive for the church is to really evaluate and assess how important it is to gather and i believe this time where we weren't able to gather it showed us how truly important it is and i think that after this is all over and we are able to gather uh, back into the building, I think people will come back with a greater desire and value gathering even more uh, than before. One thing that I would just want everybody to know that happened behind the scenes of our production of Churches Rochester Weekly was how much work the audio and uh, video guys really put in because sometimes this ministry goes uh, unnoticed and sometimes even unappreciated. But these guys just put so much time and effort, I mean hours, every time that we did come before uh, filming, they would be here getting everything ready and so many things going wrong with the cameras each and every week it seemed like. But they were always there, they were always getting things done, getting things ready for us and they just put so much time and effort into making our weekly services able to be put out online. One of the struggles with Church Online that I experienced personally was preaching into the camera of something that I'd never done before and it was the first time for I think a lot of us to just stand in front of a camera and preach to an empty auditorium. That was one difficulty that I found it was probably the most difficult for me uh, to get used to was to preach to an uh, empty auditorium without having any type of reactions or any type of feedback from the people. That was pretty difficult but I would say overall some of the difficulties that we faced was a lot of camera issues, uh, getting things set up, getting things uh, the way that we wanted to. So it was all very new to us, to each and every single one of us, a part of the team, uh, to just get used to everything and make things go as normal. Preaching online during the uh, pandemic and the quarantine period was at times extremely difficult. It was, as Eric said, a new experience for all of us. And uh, me personally, I had a sense that I had to perfectly deliver the message. There was no room to make a mistake or to say an extra word because everything, it seemed, to me that it would just stand out and kind of ruin the flow of the sermon. So I added that uh, sense of perfection and it was a burden at times for me to deliver the message. And there were other uh, periods of time where the camera would stop working or right in the middle of my sermon it would stop and then you have to start back again. So it was kind of difficult getting back into the flow again of preaching the sermon when you had to stop. I remember one time I received a call at nine o'clock at night and, and uh, David was saying that we had to refilm the sermon because potentially it got erased from the card. So things like that were happening. It was at times very stressful, but we just thank God that we were able to preach the word of God, to teach our flock in this way. And I believe it was a blessing that we were able to do it like this. Church family, we wanted to show you what was going on really behind the scenes at the Church of Rochester during this pandemic. Uh, the team, the elder team, the pastoral team, 
We came together, we prayed for the church. We prayed for needs, we, uh, we were able to call our individuals at church to see what we could pray for, to see if, we, uh, if you need anything for any physical needs or material needs. Uh, but during this time, we spent about 112 days away from meeting on Sundays. 112 days, and so behind those days, behind that time period, there was a team that was praying for you. There was a team that was uh, setting up to be able to give you a sermon online. And there was a lot of hands that came together to be able to serve God during this time to produce any uh, sermon, to produce anything, a Bible study, so that you could be spiritually fed, that you could be ministered to. But we also are thankful for the church that during this time that God blessed us, we also wanted to share, as you've seen, behind the scenes footage of the things that went on. But we also wanted to tell you, thank you church for all the prayers that uh, you have prayed to support us. And as a church, our work growing, continue to go forward as the Lord leads. And we know that God is sovereign through all this time, there is a plan. I can't even tell you exactly why all this happened, but I know during that time, there was a church, there was people behind uh, our team that was praying. And that was you, our church. We're thankful for that. Church of Rochester, I'm so glad God's connected our lives and I love serving the Lord with you. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace. Shalom. Love you. And thank you for partnering with us um, Wednesdays and Fridays for the Unity Hospital Outreach. Um, I'm getting so many different um, notes and, and, and words of thanks. God is really using uh, this uh, kind act of, of, of love. We're His hands, we're His feet. God is being glorified, and I truly believe that many people are going to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as a result of that.